Back to the coast-to-coast -coast marches and boycotts by illegal immigrants and their supporters. The big question, will it help or hurt the cause? Pedro Sepsek is the main anchorman for NBC's Spanish language network Telemundo. Pedro, glad you're with us today. Thanks for being here. Thank what, you. What do you think is most important to the people who are taking part in today's events? Basically, the putting pressure on our democracy, doing uh, these big rallies in a peaceful way, and people are looking forward to the possibility of some kind of legalization for the undocumented people. That's basically the platform, uh, and I think it's going to help the cause. If uh, answering the question that you uh, posed before, I think it's going to help the question because if the politicians don't pay attention, somebody's going to be in big trouble, either Democrats or Republicans, the ones that are against this process, will suffer in the next elections. Pedro, 70 percent of the people watching us and emailing say that illegal immigrants should be arrested at these rallies. How worried are the people there that that might happen? Can you imagine arresting a million people? That's, uh, that's basically the answer. It's going to be like uh, weeks before, at least a million people in 20, 25 cities around the country. And the answer is not arresting them unless the people that are suggesting that will lend their houses to put those people behind the, the bars or in the bathrooms until some kind of process is organized to deport them. Can you imagine something like that? It would be ridiculous. It would be pretty significant and obviously difficult to enforce. Where do you see this heading from here? Well, the problem is going to be in the House. I think in the Senate there's some kind of consensus to approve something that includes stronger enforcement a, a guest worker program and then some way of legalizing at least the people that has been here for a while. The problem is going to be in the House where the positions are a lot stronger against the illegal immigration. But remember, 20 years ago, Simpson Masoli entered history as a, a bill that, you know, an amnesty that uh, permit like at least uh, four or five million people to legalize their situations. So there's a precedent for that, and this is a, a country of precedents. Pedro, how prepared do you think these immigrants are to actually get some coaching and become political activists now to try to lobby for their cause? It's, it's very interesting because it's going to be, you know, very hard uh, down the road. But at this point, uh, spontaneously, a lot of people are mobilizing in different situations, taking aside uh, their obligations and putting a lot of time and effort in this situation. It's the best way to embrace this big country that has, you know, been an open arms country for more than 200 years to every people. Today I listened to our colleague uh, Pat Buchanan uh, from the big tribe of the Navajos because apparently he was talking like he's the, the owner of this country. And the, the, the reality is, if you take aside the Native Americans, everybody's an immigrant in some way or another. All right, we're going to have to let that be the final word. Telemundo's Pedro Sevsek. Glad you were with us today. Thank you. Up next, the first farther west. In a couple of hours, protests begin in what may be the epicenter of the immigration debate, Los Angeles. Let's bring in NBC's Jennifer London to give us a feel for what's going on there. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Natalie. We're in downtown Los Angeles across the street from City Hall. And as we await the start of today's march, there is a sense of excitement in the air. Also, a mixture of anticipation and even a little anxiety. This as the city braces for hundreds of thousands of pro-immigration activists to take to the street later today. And if we look over my shoulder, this is Spring Street right across from City Hall, as I mentioned. About 10 minutes ago, they did close down this street. And we can see they're busy working on building a platform. There are a lot of city workers right now. Now, there is one local labor union group across the street. They've been busy setting up their tents and setting up their banners. They are calling for equality and justice for all. All weekend long, city officials here in Los Angeles have been calling for peaceful demonstrations. L.A.'s Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa is reportedly not planning on participating in any of today's activities. His staff says he plans to monitor the demonstrations and the marches from his office in City Hall. In addition to urging students to stay in school today, the mayor also has a message for the marchers. 
if you're going to wave a flag, that you should wave the American flag. The American flag is the flag of our nation. Uh, it's the flag of the country that we all uh, are proud of and want to be a part of. In just about two hours, we are expecting the march towards City Hall to get underway. That will be followed by a rally on the steps of City Hall. And then about an hour after that, the marchers will begin their demonstration, their march through the streets of downtown Los Angeles. It will take them on a route that goes right through this central part of the city's economic diversity. And a lot of the businesses along the uh, marching route will be closed today. They have already closed, actually. A lot of the business owners say they are closing in part because they want to show solidarity for their workers, but also some say they do have fears about vandalism and possible violence. Now, at this point, Natalie, we have no reason to believe the protests will be anything but peaceful, but the Los Angeles Police Department is working very closely with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. They say they want to be ready for anything, because if you consider last month when they had the historic march in downtown Los Angeles, they say there could be as many as half a million people gathering here today. All right, and we will be watching for that. Jennifer London, there for us in Los Angeles. Thanks, Jennifer. And our question now to downtown Los Angeles, where the largest rally of the day is expected to culminate at City Hall. That's where Jennifer London joins us right now. Jennifer. Well, hi there. We are in downtown Los Angeles. City Hall is just behind my shoulder. And about an hour and a half, they, about an hour and a half ago, they closed Spring Street. You can see there is a lot of activity going on as they prepare for what may turn out to be hundreds of thousands of pro-immigration activists gathering at City Hall later this afternoon. We've seen them putting up police barricades, and they've been erecting this platform for one of the local labor union groups, the local 585 out of Ventura, California. Earlier today, I spoke with one of the representatives, and I. I asked the obvious question, why are you here today? And he says that they represent about 1,200 workers in the construction industry. Many are undocumented. And he said today is really a wake-up call. He wants to awaken America to the problems that many undocumented workers face. He says there are 11 to 12 million undocumented workers in this country. He says they need a legal path to citizenship, and they hope that that will be part of what comes about um, as a result of today's marches and protests, that people will really get a sense of what these undocumented workers face. That being said, we've got a small crowd that's starting to gather outside of City Hall. About 14 blocks to the south of me, we understand that thousands of marchers have already gathered. They're going to start making their way slowly towards City Hall. Again, they are predicting as many uh, as half a million people could ultimately gather outside of City Hall. From there, the marchers will proceed down another route, Wilshire Boulevard. That will take them through a very central part of the city's ethnic diversity. A lot of the businesses along that route have been closed for the day. The shop owners say it's part of a show of solidarity for the workers, but others say, you know what, with this many people taking to the streets, they are worried about possible vandalism and possible violence. The Los Angeles Police Department is working very closely with the Sheriff's Department. They say they want to be prepared for anything. And that is the latest from Los Angeles. We will be out here all day keeping an eye on what happens as the marchers make their way toward City Hall. Jennifer London in Los Angeles. Thank you, Jennifer. Welcome, everybody. Beautiful day. Thank you for being here. I know you know you have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. It's my pleasure to be here. And with look at you. this. We look at that, we match. Oh, Indeed. How cute. Mike Jarek is not boycotting the program. He is on vacation this week, but it is nonetheless today, Primero de Mayo. Yes, we've got uh, Team Fox coverage of a day without immigrants. Immigrants boycotting the United States economy by staying away from their jobs, staying away from schools, not going out and buying. Fox's William Lajeunesse is live in Los Angeles, where the biggest demonstration is taking place today. William? Well, Juliet, out here they're calling it Nothing Gringo Day. That is that people are not supposed to buy or do anything American. Of course, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Back in 1986, when the first and one-time amnesty was offered, that was supposed to end illegal immigration. As you can see from the live pictures that we have right now, that didn't happen. In essence, you've got 20 years of government neglect and, of course, contradictory laws. On one hand, we discourage illegals from coming here. 
But once they get here, we encourage them to stay. For instance, look at the border. We're spending billions there on manpower and technology to stop people. Nevertheless, police, once an illegal get here, can't even ask them their legal status. Employers hire them without penalty. Day labor centers are sometimes government mandated here in California, and the IRS will give someone a tax ID number even if they are here illegally. That is why organizers say government owes them legalization, and 70% of Americans support some type of legalization for those already here. There may be some exceptions, but again, the polls clearly say that the majority of the American public support legalization and see our demonstrations with respect and also honor. Many are taking the day off. Some businesses had to close because their workforce is so largely illegal they had no choice. Others are closing in sympathy with them. However, the big concern right now is the ports of L.A. and Long Beach. Independent truckers are threatening to close those ports. That would cause a huge problem and economically paralyze much of Southern California. Or to put it very bluntly, if you snapped your fingers and all the undocumented disappeared, Los Angeles economy would grind to a halt in the proverbial New York minute. Now, police say if truckers try to do that, they will tow the trucks and impound them for 30 days. Largely, they're expecting this to be a peaceful march and demonstration, if you will. It is supposed to end up here about 2 o'clock West Coast time, and then there'll be another march starting down Wilshire Juliet uh, later in the day, and that's the one that the mayor and the cardinal here are hoping that students will go to, trying to keep them in school for the time being. Back to you. William right. Lajanas, thanks. Yep. Meanwhile, Houston... Immigrants march while a city stands still. Organizers warn today's rallies and boycotts will paralyze Los Angeles. CNN Jen Rogers is there. Jen? Well, Kara, right now where we are, it is not paralyzed at this point. We're at City Hall, but nine blocks away from here, it is a completely different story, and that is the starting point for the protest that is supposed to end here in just a few hours. Uh, down at the starting point, uh, we have uh, seen uh, people in the white shirts that they've been requested to wear, uh, waving flags. We're seeing them stream through the downtown streets here, heading to that starting point. The organizers of this march and this protesters uh, were also behind the uh, protest at the end of March. They had about 500,000 protesters then. Uh, they say that they are expecting that number again, maybe even a number above that. The organizers are calling for immigrants to boycott work, to boycott school, and not to buy anything today. Uh, some of the people that I've talked to on their way down to the starting point say that they are following those rules so far. Uh, there is another march, though, that is expected to possibly be even bigger, and that is because it is at 4 p.m. today, and those organizers are not calling for a boycott of work or school. Uh, the uh, mayor uh, has asked for people to stay in school and go to the second march instead. Uh, that one starting at 4 p.m. local time. Time. Again, some people expecting for that one to be even bigger than the crowd we are expecting to see here shortly. Kara? What more has the mayor said? He's supporting one but not another. You know, he is here at City Hall, we are told by a press aide. He will be monitoring the events of the one here at City Hall in terms of public safety and traffic. But he has really said stay in school, that that is a big issue for him. He came out on that during the last round of protests as well. Uh, the mayor actually has on his schedule to be in Dallas this evening for an NFL owners meeting trying to get professional football back here in Los Angeles. He has supported uh, immigrant rights in the past, uh, but again, not planning on making an appearance at the City Hall rally. Possibly Possibly, we are told, uh, he could be on the docket for the afternoon rally, but that is not a sure bet either. Kara? All right, Jen Rogers, thanks so much. Well, the wave heads west. It's lunchtime in California and go time for a monumental rally for immigrant rights. Seen as Jen Rogers once again live in Los Angeles. Jen? Well, Kara, the crowds keep coming here to City Hall. That is one thing for sure. Uh, we have seen uh, definitely tens of thousands of people. We do not have exact crowd estimates at all by now, but organizers were hoping to at least match the 500,000 figure that they had back in March. Now, the organizers for this protest, which is just one of two major protests that are going on in Los Angeles today, have called for a boycott of work, of school, and of buying anything, really to flex the immigrant muscle to show how important they are to the economy. Now, one person that is following that boycott is Giovanna Gomez. She actually is not going to school today. Tell me why you decided to come here today. 
I think it's really important to show how much we contribute to the economy. It's very, very important because um, it was just how badly we really affect it, and we need to show that to everybody, to politicians, <laughs> to show it. Now you marched the nine blocks up here to City Hall. What was it like in the crowd? Has it been peaceful? What are people saying? It's very peaceful, and I thought it was pretty amazing. I actually got chills at one point just seeing how united everybody came here, like how they got. And it's just pretty amazing. It was very, very peaceful. Everyone's just supporting, and it's great. It's been great. Do you think it's going to make any difference? I am hoping. I think. I think we could show. We think it's going to make an impact, just to show. You know, if hopefully enough people do actually boycott. I think that's very important for us to boycott, not to buy absolutely anything. You know, not going to school, not selling anything. I think that shows how united we are, and it shows how much we're really contributing. I think it shows. I'm hoping, I honestly don't know if it'll get to him. I don't know if it will make a difference, but I'm hoping, and that's why we're here, to try. try. Now, the mayor, whose office is right here in this building, has said to students to stay in school today, to go to the later protest. Um, are you afraid you're going to get in trouble at all? Is this, is this a, is something you're worried about? No, not really. I thought it was important to miss school, you know. It's the same thing. It's a boycott. You're, you're boycotting. We're making them this money. Not that I'm wanting to necessarily, but I think it's very important we're going to show. So, no, I'm not worried. Well, oh, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your talking to us, Kira. That is just one voice from the many that are coming here to City Hall in Los Angeles. Kira? Jen Rogers, thanks so much. Straight to Tony Harris. Now he's... Let's get straight to Tony Harris. Uh, working, actually... Yep. Right, right, right off this subject Right matter. off this subject. Yeah, absolutely, Kira. Julie Rodriguez is with us, and she's with the United Farm Workers Union. She's involved in the protest in Los Angeles. Julie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Julie, uh, uh, first of all, did you, ask, um, did you ask workers within your union not to work today? Well, no, we wanted to respect the workers themselves and ensure that they weren't jeopardizing their um, own position and own status at the company. But as I think was previously mentioned on this um, on this newscast, that across the state of California, the fresh fruit and vegetable harvest has come to a halt. It's literally shut down today from the strawberry and lettuce fields in the Salinas Valley all the way to the table grapes and carrot industries in the Central Valley and to, of course, the luscious wine grapes up in Sonoma County. Work has come to a halt because um, the farm workers are, are in solidarity with today's actions and in, in demonstrating justice for immigrants. Uh, the members of, of your union, are, are we talking about all uh, legal uh, citizens? Legal? Are we talking about a mix of uh, folks who are here legally and illegally? There is a mixture of both documented and undocumented workers that work in um, the agricultural industry. And today, you know, tens of thousands of farm workers aren't working today, um, and instead they're joining in nonviolent marches and vigils and uh, rallies organized by the United Farm Workers across the state of California. And so um, I think that, you know, those that are undocumented obviously see the impact directly of legislation that's currently before us. And those that are do have their documentation are working in solidarity because they understand the um, the difficulties and um, some of the you sure. know hardships of um, undocumented workers. So, Julie, what is the position of the union with respect to undocumented workers? Well, the union believes that if farm workers are here and they're working in our fields, that they deserve basic human rights, they deserve basic um, labor rights and legal rights, and so that's our position on um, undocumented workers, is that if they're working in our fields, then they deserve to be protected like any other worker, like any other human being. Isn't there, isn't there sort of by definition then a natural split within the union when, when you're talking about those who are here uh, legally and those who are here undocumented, as you put it? Um, no, actually, you know, as the UFW has for years, it's fought for issues that the workers are concerned about, issues like education, like health care, like pension plans, like higher wages. Those are the rallying points for our workers. Um, it's really about the workplace issues because all of them are working together. You know, they're working in the same fields. They're working side by side one another. And they believe that they deserve, you know, better, more fair, more just treatment. And so that's really where our issues lie. Couldn't, couldn't, your, couldn't your legal uh, migrants and, and immigrants, couldn't your legal immigrants get a higher wage if they weren't in competition with those who are here uh, illegally? 
Well, I think that, you know, unfortunately folks had uh, claimed that undocumented workers and, and undocumented uh, immigrants are driving wages down. And I think that, you know, I think that there are other factors at play. Um, when the agricultural industry is willing to pay workers uh, no more than, uh, you know, what they feel like they can to make a certain profit, then they're willing to do that at any cost. And so I think, unfortunately, as, as oftentimes is the case, we're blaming the victim here um, rather than really looking at enforcement and that ensuring that our workers are treated with dignity and with, with, with respect. They're contributing a tremendous amount, not just here in California, to the Californian economy, but throughout the country. And I think today is witness of really the impact and, um, and the, uh, the power of immigrants. Oh, so much more to say, so much more to, to ask you, Julie. But thanks for your time. Uh, Julie Rodriguez with the United Farm Workers Union, who was involved in the demonstration in Los Angeles, Kira. All right. <laughs> Tony Harris, thank you so sure. much. Thanks so much. You know, immigrant rights activism is a family tradition for my next guest. Christine Chavez is the granddaughter of legendary labor leader Cesar Chavez. She's also running for the seat in the California Assembly. This is the second time she, we've had the chance to have her on the show. Christine, it's great to have you back. Thank you. No, thank you for inviting me back. You have been uh, funneling in information uh, to us. Actually, uh, I've been using it within the past hour, uh, coming from uh, the United Farm Workers Union. Tell me where you have been today and what you've been tracking with regard to these farmers uh, and how it's affecting the agriculture uh, industry uh, up to this point. Yeah, we got reports from a number of our field offices all the way down as far as the Imperial Valley, which borders uh, Mexico, and then all the way up to the Napa Vineyards. We are hearing, we're getting reports that in the um, fruit and vegetables, um, the workers have walked out and have joined the United Farm Workers at massive protests. And so as we know it, uh, you know, the agricultural in this state has come to a halt. There are nobody picking fruits and vegetables right now. So what do you think about what is taking place today? Is this the way to go? Is, is, should it be done through a boycott? Should it be done through not showing up to work, not going to school, uh, and, and making these types of efforts? Well, I was just that, you know, I live in East Los Angeles and driving through the community of East Los Angeles this morning, there was businesses shut, even a jack-in-the-box said, due to staffing problems, we are closed today. And then we joined the city of Maywood out in the southeast area of Los Angeles with thousands and thousands of people from all the southeast areas coming together. And I, it was so inspiring to see people marching just the way that uh, Dr. King and Cesar Chavez to marching nonviolently for one single a common cause. It's very inspiring. You saw mothers there with their, with their small children. You saw, you know, hundreds of just thousands of people out there marching all for the same cause. Let me, you know, we've been getting a lot of emails, uh, Christine, a, a lot of angry emails. Uh, one coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. Malfina said, my aunt has been waiting for almost 11 years to become an immigrant legally. These protesters think they can become legal by abandoning their jobs, endangering our economy, and insulting the hardworking middle class. What do you think about these people that are extremely angry about what uh, the illegal immigrants and the immigrants are doing today? Well, we were, we're also extremely upset about bills like H.R. 4437 that look to penalize, you know, people who are just here to work. And so one of the, one of the things we've done at the United Farm Workers is we're trying to put farm workers on a path towards earned legalization. You have to remember that farm workers, are, they feed this nation, and it is important for them to come out of the shadows and be a part of society. And this is one day where we're all getting together saying enough is enough. We would like to have earned legalization. What do you think your grandfather would think of all this? I know that growing up, the only way that you really had a chance to spend time with your grandfather was to go to the protests and be a part of these uh, protests with him. Um, as he looks down on what's happening today, what do, you, what, what do you think that he would say? He would be so proud. And there's a quote that he used to say. He used to say, we don't need perfect political systems, but we need perfect participation. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Whether people cho chose to boycott or chose to go to work, because there was some people that could not do that. And everybody has to respect that also. But we, we're asking people to come and participate after work and just to have a day of action. You know, educate your neighbors about it. If you're in school, educate other, other students about that. But really talk about, about H.R. 4437 and speak out against that. So I think my grandfather would be on the forefront on all, of all of these activities and, would, and is very proud to see everybody marching just the way he did nonviolently.
Well, Christine, what do you think about uh, President Vicente Fox and, and what's happening in Mexico? And we're focusing so much on the protests here, but what about uh, the corruption in Mexico? What about uh, making life better uh, for the men and women there? So this isn't so much of an issue. No, there. No, there definitely needs to be, you know, some changes in Mexico. But right now, what we're focused on are the people that are working here in this country and making sure that they're given all the opportunities that everybody else has in, in the United States. And I think that with these marches and these protests, we're definitely going to see a broken immigration system be put in, in the forefront of, of, you know, of everybody's living rooms. And everybody's going to continue to talk about this issue until we see this system um, work. Christine Chavez, always good to talk to you. Appreciate you joining us again today. Thank you. Well, they were enemies in Iraq. In the so-called day without immigrant uh, protests uh, here in the United States today, many demonstrators marched through the streets of Los Angeles to their city hall. Joining us now is the mayor of L.A., Antonio Villaraigosa. Mr. Mayor, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, was this a good idea to organize these demonstrations and these boycotts today? What I've said is uh, on that issue is uh, that participating in a boycott uh, is a personal decision. I didn't uh, oppose or uh, argue for uh, a boycott. And either way, what I did say was that I want kids to stay in school. Uh, we know that uh, many have stayed in school, but some are participating in today's march. I also said that uh, there would be an opportunity later on in the day uh, to, for young people to march, and we're hoping that that's what they'll do. You know, it's hard to tell. I can only say this, uh, that these marches that the tens of thousands of people and we don't have an exact estimate but we know that it's going to be a very very large de demonstration we understand maybe the largest in the nation uh, what's clear is they're peaceful what's peer, uh, clear is that they're celebratory in their mood uh, their families uh, children grandparents uh, it's a very positive environment uh, i of course have spent most of my time with, with the emergency operations center to ensure that we're managing uh, this number of people, although we expect it to continue to be peaceful. Uh, there's a, obviously a lot of things that could happen when you have so many people concentrated uh, in such a small area. Mr. Mr. Mayor, has there been any, uh, any problems yet, any, dem any inv demonstrations getting violent, any incidents? No. In fact, we just had an update about an hour and a half ago of our emergency operations center. Uh, it was reported that there have been no incidents, no arrests, uh, no uh, one injury, somebody tripped. Uh, while walking. Uh, other than that, uh, things have been very, very peaceful, very positive. And I'm happy to say uh, that the vast majority of people have American flags, uh, as they should, uh, and uh, that uh, people are very, very positive about the American dream. Should they not carry Mexican flags? Well, I've said from the beginning, look, uh, we live here in the United States of America. I was born and raised here. Uh, if you want to be part of this nation, uh, an American flag uh, is appropriate. Uh, and, you know, the other uh, flags that people may fly are certainly uh, an indication of their, uh, you know, yearning for the old country. But, uh, uh, you know, it's important for us to demonstrate uh, that we want to be part of the American dream. What did you think of this controversy that erupted in recent days over the translation of the Star Spangled Banner into Spanish? Uh, what, what was your take on that? Wolf, let me just say to you, uh, let me make it absolutely clear. I was offended. Uh, I was offended because uh, for me, uh, the national anthem uh, is something that uh, I believe deserves respect. Uh, and uh, I think that the, without question, that the vast majority of people in the United States of America were uh, offended as well. Uh, we want, uh, you know, this, our anthem should be sung in English. Uh, the Spanish uh, and Mexican anthems should be sung in Spanish. Uh, the French an anthem and, fr and French. Uh, so I was offended by it, and I think most people were. Uh, and remember, very few people uh, bought into that. Uh, it really was a non-issue, but it, I think it was important to dismiss it as quickly as possible. A lot of us were concerned when we heard last week, Mr. Mayor, that there had been death threats against you and the Lieutenant Governor of California, Cruz Bustamante. Uh, where does that stand right now? Is it indicative of a bigger problem that has erupted here, growing out of this whole battle over immigration reform? I hope not. And first of all, let me make something absolutely clear, Wolf. Uh, the FBI looked into that uh, threat. There's nothing to it. Uh, there have been others in the past, I'll admit, but uh, uh, I can tell you this. 
uh, that with the job of mayor or a governor, you're going to get uh, that kind of thing from time to time. Uh, I don't let it uh, bother me. I have a great security team that's with me uh, at all times. I can tell you this. Uh, my uh, belief is that you, you call them like you see them. Uh, you stand by your convictions and your principles. And, you know, if people disagree with that, uh, so be it. Uh, Republican Congressman Dana Rohrabacher of California, your neighbor out in Orange County, uh, he said this uh, not that long ago. He said, over the years, it's been evident that the Democrats exploit illegal immigrants for political reasons. Granting amnesty will only serve to draw more illegal aliens to our country and add to the burden placed on our public school system, health care system, and criminal justice system. Uh, on the specific issue of amnesty, a lot of the uh, protesters today want amnesty for the 10, 12 uh, million illegal immigrants in this country. Where do you stand on the issue of allowing these people to live here legally and eventually become citizens? First, let me just say that Dana Rohrabacher is a friend of mine. Uh, I have uh, a lot of respect for him. We don't agree uh, on every issue. In fact, we uh, don't often agree on uh, many issues, but uh, he's a good person. I disagree with that idea, though. Uh, I th I, uh, where the idea that somehow all of these people uh, are asking for amnesty. What they're asking for uh, is a, a fair and sensible bipartisan uh, immigration reform that secures our borders, uh, that enforces our laws, that holds people uh, accountable for, uh, for the consequences of breaking the law by fining them, uh, that says that employer sanctions should be levied on employers who hire uh, the undocumented, but that there should also be a pathway for citizenship uh, if you play by the rules uh, and pay your taxes and have not gotten involved with the law. So, you know, look, uh, people are going to say what they're going to say. Unfortunately, some uh, like to polarize. I don't think that's something endemic to any party. I think, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of demagogues out there, and they like whipping it up. The mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Villaraigosa, I know it's been a busy day for you. Thanks for spending a few moments here in the Situation Room. Thank you, Wolf. And let's get another perspective. Ian, Los Angeles, Chris Lawrence is there. Chris? Well, both hundreds of thousands of people continue to march through the streets of Los Angeles right now, chanting uh, Unidos Estamos and Si Se Puede, uh, United We Stand, We Can Do It. Uh, and, and what we're seeing now is some of the organizers starting to say they're going to look beyond today's boycott to the actual ballot box. Markets bustling with business on Friday, empty out during Monday's boycott, and millions of marchers rally across America. But organizers are already looking to the next step. Today's movement translates into augmented uh, voter power and voter uh, conscientiousness and, and, a, and a voting bloc. That last part won't be easy. Different groups, different priorities. Some want the government to legalize undocumented immigrants. But some Asian Americans say it first needs to ease the backlog on family visas for those who emigrated here legally. Because there's not enough resources for services, people are waiting a long time. Eun Suk Lee says she knows families who have lost decades. Would you wait 20 years to bring your daughter to the country? Wouldn't you find any other means? Politically, some see a growing sophistication in the immigrant rights movement, such as replacing Mexican flags from earlier rallies with American flags. Here in California, Latinos decided to become an active political force. Political analyst Alan Hoffenblum says Republicans controlled the state legislature 12 years ago, but they lost it after taking a shrill stance on immigration rights. So I warned my Republican allies nationwide, better be careful, look here what happens in California. They lost every legislative seat in California that had a predominant or a significant Latino population. Because Republicans perceived to be an anti-Mexican, anti-immigrant, uh, the Latinos ceased to vote for them. Some of the organizers had urged students to boycott school today. L.A.'s mayor and other leaders warned them not to. We've learned that about 72,000 students in grades 6 through 12 did not show up for school today. That means more than one quarter missed class. Wolf. Chris Lawrence in L.A., thank you. Still to come. Now, by going to the marches, people stayed away from work and school and in Los Angeles alone. 72,000 middle and high school students skipped class today. 
That's about roughly 25% of the student body population. Right now, let's go straight back to L.A., where that massive rally has inundated the downtown streets around City Hall. Chris Lawrence has the very latest for us right now. Chris? Paula, there were two major rallies here today. The first one brought tens of thousands of people right here to City Hall. Take a look behind me. This is what's left of it. The LAPD came in here just about 30 minutes ago and literally moved tens of thousands of people out of the area uh, peacefully, I should add. Most of them have made their way to the other rally here along the Wilshire Avenue corridor. We'll take you a look now for a live look at that from an aerial viewpoint. You can see just the incredible crowds of people that showed up here today. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, about 72,000 students did not show up at school today. That came because organizers had urged them to boycott school, even while L.A.'s mayor and other leaders warned them that they should show up. Obviously, in this case, uh, the organizers' viewpoint won out. Uh, we saw a lot throughout the day, as you're seeing now in that picture, and as we saw here on the ground here earlier, tens of thousands of people marching through the streets. Uh, a big difference from earlier rallies in that where once before we saw a tremendous amount of Mexican flags, there were still those Mexican flags, but they were greatly outnumbered by American flags. Perhaps organizers now playing to middle America uh, to get their point across. Uh, we heard people uh, chanting, uh, Unidos estamos, uh, united we stand. Uh, talked to one student who said uh, that he was here, uh, he was born here in the United States, but that his parents were immigrants, and so that's why the issue was so important to him. Uh, as the organizers look back on what happened today, many will be trying to flex their political muscle. Uh, a lot of them have been trying to register voters here and, again, trying to take what's happened here and extend it from the boycott uh, to the ballot box. Paula? Chris Lawrence, the one thing, though, that didn't happen today was a massive roundup that some of those marchers were fearing. Really. Next on Special Report, a combination boycott, strike, and political protest sends hundreds of thousands of immigrants and their supporters into the streets, leaving many plants, farms, and stores shut down across the country. The message, we may not be here legally, America, but you need us. We'll have two reports plus analysis. The president says he's encouraged by what... Welcome to Washington. I'm Britt Hume on a bright spring day across America. Factories slowed production, stores and markets closed, and crops went untended as hundreds of thousands of immigrants, legal and illegal, streamed into the streets. What you're seeing right now is an aerial view of New York City right at this moment. They are protesting their treatment at the hands of a country that they say needs them as much as they need it. Chief Washington correspondent Jim Engel has an overview of the day's demonstrations. Jim? Britt, as Congress begins the effort once again to reach a consensus on immigration reform, many of the nation's immigrants walked off their jobs in hopes of demonstrating how much the nation relies on them. Waving signs that say Great American Boycott in English and Spanish, hundreds of thousands of immigrants, legal and illegal, stayed away from work today and were urged by activists to boycott shops as well all an effort to demonstrate how important immigrants are to the U.S. economy. The whole idea is to make sure that we send a message that the sleeping giant is awake. And this is only the beginning of a movement. In Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Denver, and Washington, D.C., among others, illegal immigrants and their supporters marched, some just to demonstrate their numbers, others to demand specific changes in the law, some to demand an end to any law limiting immigration. In fact, some flatly demanded that Congress immediately grant what amounts to amnesty. I actually in full legalization. I mean, we have workers here, we have a need for them, and we need to respect them. In other demonstrations last month, large numbers of Mexican flags caused a negative public reaction. So this time, there were plenty of American flags. I want to be part of this country. That's why I'm carrying the American flag, and I'm carrying it because I want the people to know that I want to stay here. You know, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of carrying this flag. Some immigrants' rights groups actually oppose the boycott and fear that groups with a leftist political agenda are trying to hijack their cause. One group called Answer, for instance, opposes sanctions on Cuba and was even against the war in Afghanistan. One organizer of an earlier demonstration suggested the U.S. has no right to stop immigrants. 
Listen, when you rename your corporations and stop creating havoc, poverty, exploiting, okay, extracting the natural resources and, and the labor from those countries, that's when you're going to have no more immigrants into the U.S. Just the kind of rhetoric Carlos Castro was worried about. He's a grocery store owner and the head of a Latino immigrant group in the Washington, D.C. area who opposed the boycott. We really uh, support the immigrant uh, cause and we want to do everything we can, but I think you just uh, uh, the boycott is not going to do us any good at, at this moment. In Washington, for instance, out of the 47 organizations that supported the last demonstration, only one embraced today's boycott. People around Washington were more sensitive to the political repercussions in Congress, which is trying once again to fashion a compromise on immigration reform. I think we have to give uh, time to uh, the Senate and to Congress to really think a good law that can uh, uh, benefit the community. And creating uh, frictions, creating antagonism is not going to help us. Nevertheless, many businesses around the country closed in sympathy or to allow workers to join the boycott. That was especially true in meatpacking and construction. And this landscaper in California gave his workers the day off. I mean, many of them are undocumented workers. Is it fair to say that? Uh, well, I'm not going to comment on their uh, status. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not Homeland Security, but... Uh, I gave them the day off. Uh, I knew they wanted to be here. I gave them the day with pay. But some immigrants who came and waited in line for their papers were not happy about others demanding amnesty. We're all here today to tell those illegal protesters, you do not speak for me. Another said it is not fair that illegal immigrants feel they have the right to jump in line in front of all of us who have been working really hard legally to be here. One of the most remarkable aspects of these activities is how many, is how open many were about illegal immigration. For decades, illegal immigrants had done everything they could not to call attention to themselves, but facing renewed efforts by some members of Congress to deport them, they're now trying to demonstrate the U.S. needs them and relies on them, and that they have supporters who will fight to keep them here. Brett. Jim, thank you. Because illegal immigrants still operate largely below the radar, it is impossible to know exactly how many people in Los Angeles are there illegally. But as Fox News correspondent William Lajeunesse reports, thousands of them and their supporters fill the streets there today. William? Well, Brett, we know that about a third of the county workforce is foreign-born. Up to 15 percent could be here illegally. That could be 500,000 people. As a result, we did have widespread walkouts here today. Some businesses closed out of solidarity and others because they had to. This apparel factory in downtown Los Angeles, typical of Southern California businesses that depend on illegal immigration. Last week, it looked like this. Today, empty. The owner forced to close because many of his workers labor in the so-called underground economy. What are you going to do, send a couple of million people back to their home countries? You know, it's, it's going to be bad. And I mean, it's just, go with the flow, help us out, we'll help you out. You know what I mean? Like, we, got a lot, we can do a lot more for this country. Today's protest is supposed to be a wake-up call for America and a historic day for its undocumented workers, who say they're no longer willing to be invisible or silent. This woman's brother is here illegally. He doesn't have papers, so I call him and I say, I'm going to walk for you because I want you to have papers like I do. Latinos in California called today's boycott Nothing Gringo Day, pledging to do nothing and buy nothing American. That offended some Americans who say the undocumented population is ruining the country, refusing to assimilate, driving down wages, and taking jobs. We go look for jobs, it's like, it's all... Mexicans and everything, all that's supposed to belong to us. We built this place, you know. Opponents and advocates alike blame both political parties for 20 years of government and political neglect and contradictory laws, discouraging immigrants at the border, but encouraging them once they're in. I hope both parties uh, get together and discuss this problem because uh, it's affecting the whole economy and the whole country. And at Brit, at this point in time, a recent field poll study here in California showed about up to 70% of Californians supported the so-called comprehensive approach, open arms now, and then close the door. Brett? William, one question. Um, is, do you sense a difference in the attitude that the Mexican immigrants have from those from other countries out there? You know, we do, Britt. Um, one, one thing we're finding, of course, is that um, 
With Mexico, it seems to be a generational entitlement, if you will. We know that the government of Mexico is even projecting 400 to 500,000 Mexicans will continue to come into the United States for the next decade, regardless of what Congress does. 49% say they want to come to the United States, and up to half of them would do so illegally. Brett? William, thanks very much. Wow. Trustees of the... Welcome to BBC World. Mass strikes are underway across the United States in protest at the country's immigration laws. Tens of thousands stayed away from work and school. Others have avoided spending money. It's all an effort to show how the American economy depends on migrants. There are up to 12 million illegal immigrants in the US and Mexicans account for more than half of that number. Every year, up to 1.2 million migrants enter the U.S., both legally and illegally. Most illegal immigrants live in California. That's over 2.5 million of them. About a sixth of illegal immigrants are under the age of 16. And it's estimated that 40% of all illegal immigrants work in agriculture. This is the giant that no longer sleeps. Millions of illegal Latino migrants who are now coming out of the shadows to demand the right to live and work legitimately in this country. In Los Angeles, half a million marched in support of their cause. In Chicago, the canyons of downtown filled with 300,000 demonstrators. Even in Milwaukee, in the heart of middle America, 100,000 turned up. It was the same story in 26 cities across the country. Today wasn't just about the noisy protests on the streets. It was also about the silent boycott at work. Agricultural businesses are the first that would collapse without migrant labor. We have a day without tomatoes, without an immigrants, without tomatoes. To find out about the impact on the restaurant industry, all we had to do today is try to have lunch at our favorite deli, the Port of Piraeus, owned by a Greek American, but staffed exclusively by Latinos. It's empty because they're about to close early and head to the demonstration. Bardino Molina from Honduras has been here for 18 years. He's now a legal resident, but many of his friends aren't. This boycott is important for us, he told me. We provide the backbone of this economy, and we need to show some backbone to our community, legal and illegal. So Frankie Doll, the owner, locks the doors, hoping there won't be too many days like this. But on Capitol Hill, there is fierce opposition to reform, especially from Republicans. I have two huge problems trying to get anything done on immigration in the United States. One's the Democratic Party. It sees massive immigration, both legal and illegal, as a source of voters, right? The other is the Republican Party that sees massive immigration, both legal and illegal, as a source of cheap labor. Today's marches were peaceful and patriotic. Most Americans don't support their plight, but nor can they imagine an economy without Latinos. Matt Fry, BBC News, Washington. This was a day of immigration protests around the country. Legal and illegal immigrants stayed away from workplaces, schools, and shopping centers to show their economic weight. And thousands gathered at rallies and marches from Miami to Detroit to Denver. In New York City, protesters linked arms in a human chain. Several large companies, including Gallo Wines and Tyson Foods, shut down some or all of their operations. We'll have much more on this story right after the news summary. Today's immigration protests. We begin with reports from NewsHour correspondents Jeffrey Kay of KCET Los Angeles, Rich Samuels of WTTW Chicago, and Kwame Holman in Washington, D.C. California is first. Walking away from their jobs and classrooms, thousands of people, many waving American flags, gathered on the streets of Los Angeles today. Among them, hotel worker Victoria Vergara. We are not criminals. We are workers. We contribute to this country, and it's only fair that they legalize those who don't have documents. 
Vergara and other demonstrators were galvanized by proposed federal legislation that would make illegal immigration a crime. By withholding their labor and their buying power, protesters hope to showcase the economic clout of illegal immigrants, who comprise an estimated 15% of the LA labor force. The first economic effects of the May Day boycott were seen early this morning in downtown Los Angeles. A wholesale produce market, normally bustling with activity, was all but deserted. Stalls were closed and trucks were at a standstill. Have you ever seen it like this? No, never. Not even on Sundays. Merchant Ruben Calderon, himself an immigrant from Mexico, gave his five workers the day off. He says he'll lose as much as $4,000 in sales, but he says it's for a good cause. It's a lot of hard times for the immigrants right now, and I think it's the right time to, you know, let them talk, you know, let them notice that they're here, and they're here for good, because they're hardworking people, so I think they, they need, you know, some kind of a legal status to be here. Early morning commuters into downtown Los Angeles found light traffic today. Normally crowded buses were nearly empty. Businesses weren't the only places affected by the boycott. Outside Belmont High School, which is 91% Latino, junior Cynthia Contreras urged students to demonstrate. She said many kids here illegally won't be able to get a higher education. Most students immigrated when they were very small with their family. They didn't choose to come here, but unfortunately they can't continue their education just because they don't have the legal status. A key architect of today's protest was immigrant rights activist Nativa Lopez. He says a boycott is the most potent way to show America's reliance on undocumented immigrants. If people just stop and reflect, okay, change your own children's diapers, mow your own lawn, fix your own car, program your own computer, change the diapers of your elders that are in convalescent homes, do all the other grimy, dirty, uh, stoop, difficult labor that immigrants do, and then truly you'll appreciate their tremendous value to society and reward them with legalizing their status. It was a message that resonated even with those who constantly struggle to find work. Last week, these day laborers in Hollywood said they would honor today's work stoppage. If we've crossed the border, crossed the deserts, risking our lives to get here, why not give up a day of work for something that can help us all? Many merchants in Latino immigrant communities also joined the boycott by shuttering their businesses, but not all merchants embraced the boycott idea enthusiastically. Fred Adibi, who's an immigrant from Iran, said last week he was afraid that if he kept his appliance store open, it would anger his Latino customers and neighbors. I'm making money out of them. They're spending money. So I'm supporting them. Even within the immigrant rights community, the boycott has had its skeptics and critics. Some activists feared immigrants might be fired if they participated in a boycott. If they feel that their job is in danger, we feel that that's it. they don't need to risk their job on this day. Angelica Salas supports the cause, but not the boycott. So the organization she directs, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles, helped plan an alternative to this boycott march, a separate late afternoon demonstration for after school and after work. When you're actually threatening somebody's um, uh, daily uh, bread, when, when you're actually uh, threatening somebody's uh, wages, you better be very serious about why you're calling um, that, um, that action, that boycott. To accommodate protesters, officials closed streets in downtown Los Angeles, and the federal courts shut down for the afternoon in anticipation of expected traffic snarls. Demonstrations that began midday in Los Angeles rolled into the evening as they did throughout Southern California. It was demonstrators as far as the eye could see at the staging area for Chicago's march. Chicago was where the idea for a nationwide demonstration originated. It was the brainchild of Jose Artemio Areola, a service workers union official. We need it. We need it. Uh, in immigration reform.
He proposed a rally that was held here in March. Latino radio personalities like Javier Salas provided publicity that led to a turnout of at least 100,000 then. Today, he had to overcome what he claimed was a negative image projected by some sectors of the Anglo media. We're not burning flags. We're not singing anthems in, in bilingual. We're not offending this country. We all want is to share the American dream, as cliche as it sounds. We just want to have the opportunity to provide for our families. Between 300,000 and 500,000 marchers turned out here today. Organized labor had a considerable presence here. Tony Avalos, a Teamster organizer, believes managers agree with workers on the immigration issue. They're very supportive because uh, they're not afraid uh, uh, of the walkout or not being here. They want us to come back to work. They want us to be legal. They want us. To, uh, they want to give us the things that everybody else has. Joining the Chicago marchers today with some misgivings was Carmen Velasquez. She's a health care professional. Many of her clients are immigrants without documentation. You have to be have the courage to call attention to your issue. Whether it's the best way to do it, I'm not quite sure, but I do know this, that unless we do something that demonstrates to the entire country that this is still America, that we have the right to voice our concern and our issues and bring it out in the open. And we are not afraid to talk about this issue. And this country has to stop being afraid uh, to talk about it only because we have come out and said, deal with us. We're not going to erase you. You cannot erase us from the blackboard. Among the elected officials addressing the marchers was U.S. Senator Barack Obama. You know, I am proud of the fact that a national movement began in Chicago because Chicago has always been ahead of the curve. And what started out as a march born of fear, fear of a house bill that would criminalize and create felons out of hardworking families who are simply trying to raise their children as best they can, has now become a movement of hope. But not all Chicago's African Americans agreed with Senator Obama today. Talk show host Cliff Kelly fielded a call this morning he says was not unique. But they're here illegally. Mm -hmm. And if they broke the law, then they should be sent back as many as can. Talk show host Kelly says jobs are the issue for this and other like minded callers. He mentioned the fact of how many African Americans are out of work. That's what's behind it sheer economics. People need jobs you know notwithstanding all this we hear about oh the economy this that and the other that's a bunch of crap as i say drive through my community and you see all these people on the street at noon they are looking for work while chicago's was by far the largest pro-immigration rally in illinois a handful of other demonstrations were held throughout the state it looked like business as usual in the nation's capital today. There were taxi cabs aplenty. The clang from construction sites echoed through the streets. And daily life for most went undisturbed as many immigrants showed up for their jobs or gave advance warning they'd be gone. In some of Washington's Latino neighborhoods, such as Mount Pleasant, several businesses were closed in observance of the boycott. But feelings remained mixed, especially in Carlos West's apparel store, which he kept open. I'm a supporter. I, I, I support, but then again, everyone's got to pay rent. You know, everyone's got to pay the bills, you know. In one day, we had to be together, to work together, but let, let they, they know what we are strong in this country and we pay taxes like them, like everybody else. A few blocks away, a popular Mexican restaurant did its usual Monday lunchtime business. Many of L'Oreal Plaza's 300 seats were filled. Co-owners Luis Reyes and Raul Sanchez talked to their employees last week and decided shutting down today wasn't the best way to support immigrants' rights. I don't think we'll help uh, the, uh, get uh, attention with the boycott. I think we'll... we'll look bad for, for us. The owners, as well as most of the staff, were born outside the U.S. Everybody knows uh, that uh, immigrants are useful and, 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 and is needed here. We've been needed. 
And um, uh, tell everybody, don't go to work. Uh, it's not going to help. Uh, we're going to dis disrupt the economy uh, to show what? Uh, what are we going to show? Another usually bustling lunchtime spot, Chef Jeff's, also kept its doors open for most of the day. This country is founded on, on immigration. That was a collective uh, decision, believe. according to owner Jeff Tracy, who convinced his team that closing would hurt everyone. We're a profit-sharing uh, company. We, I, I, at the end of the year, um, I give back a large percentage of the profits to all my employees. Um, they all know that. Um, and and, 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 and so, so we talked about that. $30,000 worth of revenue that just disappears, you know, that's just gone. It's essentially a profit that's just gone. And, you know, they kind of balanced that out. And they said, well, you know, maybe that's not a good thing for the, for the restaurant. Tracy acknowledged his restaurant business depends heavily on an immigrant workforce. And he's not alone. About 45% of Washington, D.C. area food service workers are immigrants, not all illegal, according to the Pew Hispanic Center. So there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of labor involved, um, and a lot of that comes from the Latino community. And if they all get together and say, hey, you know, we're not going to work today, well, if the produce doesn't arrive, um, there won't be many Caesar salads that day. Around the corner, the management of Finimundo closed the restaurant in solidarity with its employees, most of whom are immigrants. Manager David Burkhardt said that meant a hit to the bottom line. How much money are you going to stand if it's closing down on Monday? Anywhere between five to twelve thousand dollars. But next door, the high noon deli struggled to deal with the lunchtime crowd when half its workers chose to boycott. Manager Stella Dumka expected that and planned ahead. We're going to be very frazzled all day, and we're going to just keep going and do the best we can, and that's all you can do. Many immigrants and their supporters who chose not to work came together this afternoon for a rally in the city's most prominent Latino neighborhood. That wasn't a concern for Roxana Rivas. Owners of the nearby store where she works chose to close for the day. Where I work, it's a Hispanic business and all my bosses support us. They know we are dignified people and they understand we need to one day legalize and get papers. Though much smaller than last month's pro-immigration rally on the National Mall, today's action in Washington pleased organizers. They said the so-called sleeping giant of immigrants has been awakened and promised to continue the push for legal status for America's millions of undocumented people. I'm Bob Schieffer. They left their jobs and took to the streets to show us what America would be like without millions of immigrant workers. So we'll start in the streets tonight and go on to these stories. I'm Kelly Cobiella in Dodge City, Kansas, where the biggest employers in town shut down in the face of today's boycott. An exclusive interview. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Good evening from coast to coast, from north to south. They wanted us to know what America would be like without them. And so millions of immigrants missed work, skipped school, and marched in the streets. They want America to find a place for those who came here illegally. And it's too soon to know if they changed any minds in Congress. But what we do know is that construction sites shut down, hundreds of restaurants and many small businesses closed across the country. We start tonight with national correspondent Byron Pitts in Chicago. Byron. Well, Bob, organizers here in Chicago had hoped for about 300,000 demonstrators. Early estimates are at least 400,000 showed up. Their goal, make America take notice. What do we want? Justice! When? It was billed as a day without immigrants, legal and illegal immigrants by the thousands, not simply marching and shouting, but flexing their economic muscle. Uh, mess in the restaurants, mess in the hotels, in the streets, in the constructions, and I think they need, they need us. Americans, they don't want the kind of job, so we practically were doing that job and they don't want it, you know. Unlike last month's wave of demonstrations, politicians didn't simply take notice. Today, many showed up. 
I've talked to people across the country who say, right. how dare people who broke the law by entering the United States now plead with the Senate and the Congress to do something about that? Well, you know, the problem is, is that uh, we've been engaging in hypocrisy in this country. We don't mind these folks uh, mowing our lawns or looking after our children or serving us at restaurants as long as they don't uh, actually ask for any uh, rights in return. No work, no shopping, no school. This is a wonderful educational opportunity for these kids to see social justice in action. In Los Angeles, an estimated half million demonstrators turned out. But their real impact was elsewhere. This was L.A.'s famed 7th Street Market on Friday. Look at it today. 85 businesses closed. Construction sites in California virtually empty. Skeleton crews in Virginia. Restaurants across the country closed so workers could join in demonstrations. Yet it's the farming industry that likely suffered the most. Estimates are there are more than 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. They make up 24% of the farm workers, 17% of the cleaning industry, 14% of construction, 12% of the nation's food service workers. Tell again what you hope to accomplish today. We are here to send a message to this country, to Congress, that we want dignity, we want respect, and we want legalization that includes every immigrant. Of the estimated 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S., 7 million have jobs. Jobs that in many places did not get done today. Bob? Uh, Byron, is there any way to know yet exactly what the, or give an estimate of what the economic impact was today? Well, Bob, not really. We've heard estimates as high as a billion dollars, billion with a B. But we talked to many economists today who said there's simply no way to know for sure with so many illegal immigrants working off the books. All Bob. right. Well, well, thank you very much, Byron. That is a good point. Nowhere in America was all this being watched more closely or felt more deeply than Dodge City, Kansas, which is why Kelly Kobayea is reporting from there tonight. Dodge City, Kansas is the heart of the Old West, home to cowboy legends, the cattle trade, and today to 15,000 Hispanic immigrants, half the area's population. Uh, the Hispanic people only come to, for work, for work, you know. They're not criminal, only looking for yap. Clemente Torres has lived here more than 20 years. He's a legal resident now and works in one of two huge Dodge City meatpacking plants. The two American companies that own the plants closed them today as a sign of support for their overwhelmingly Hispanic workforce. And Torres, along with thousands of his co-workers, marched down Main Street, where the usually busy Hispanic-owned shops were closed. It was a sight that worried some of Dodge City's Anglos. Amy Wetzel's family has been here for five generations. It's going to hurt us, mm -hmm. especially with the community that we're minority now, you know, whites are, mm -hmm. or, you know, so, yeah, it's going to hurt. But today didn't entirely play out along predictable lines in Dodge City. The boycott was far from universal. Mike Weiss kept his furniture store open. How many of your employees are Latino? Over half. Sales and delivery, both. How many showed up for work today? All of them. And after a slow start to the day, Weiss's usual customers showed up. For him, the growing Latino community has meant a 40% jump in sales. For a long time, we've always heard that, you know, these people were transient. They'd come to Dodge, they would uh, get a job, and they'd send the money back to Mexico. And we're seeing just the opposite. Today's boycott didn't close down Dodge City, but it was another reminder that the Old West has a new face and a future that is guaranteed to include immigrant workers, no matter how Washington lawmakers decide their legal fate. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Dodge City, Kansas. These demonstrations were just more bad news for an administration that does not seem to get much good news anymore. As Brent, David Brent and John Who's America? Tonight, from coast to coast, the marches, immigrants, and their allies take to the streets. Mass rallies on what they call a day without immigrants. The goal, to show how much the nation relies on them. And the impact. What would happen if America's immigrants didn't come to work? Also... From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. 
Good evening. We've been covering a major story unfolding all day. Organizers of a national protest called this a day without immigrants. They called on people to walk off their jobs and walk into the streets today in a massive national demonstration to call attention to a red-hot issue. There were large protests planned in upwards of 75 cities across this country. This was the scene at the height of it all in San Francisco, solid people for blocks. The day was sparked by legislation that's tied up in Congress currently and demands by immigrant groups that they be allowed to work legally and become citizens in this country. The protests worked in many cases. Stores closed as workers headed out the door and live television covered it all all day long. We have comprehensive coverage tonight from coast to coast, and we'll begin tonight by setting the scene in cities across this country, where today protesters filled the streets. NBC's Kevin Tibble starts us off in Chicago tonight. Kevin, what's the situation there at this hour? Brian, Chicago police tell us that some 400,000 people took to the streets here today. They may have come from different countries and different cultures, but today they spoke with one voice for immigration reform. I'm Lester Holt in New York, where a peaceful protest has resembled something like a parade of nations. Marchers right now making their way down Broadway under the flags of many foreign countries. A reminder of the diversity of the immigrant population here and why the issue resonates so strongly in this part of the country. I'm Ron Allen in Denver, where today the crowds exceeded expectations. The Hispanic community is about one-third of Denver's population and growing, and today showed how that community can be organized and take its concerns directly to the public. I'm Michelle Kosinski in Miami, where a candlelight vigil and music will wrap up an entire day of demonstration in South Florida under hot sun. The size of some of the crowds at these rallies surprised even the people who organized them, and a number of businesses and farms were shut down today. I'm Peter Alexander along the U.S.-Mexico border near San Diego. Demonstrators briefly shut down all lanes on the Mexican side of this, the world's busiest border crossing. Many of the 75,000 immigrants who cross here legally each day stayed home with both their work permits and their wallets. I'm Jennifer London in downtown Los Angeles, where one unofficial estimate puts today's boisterous crowd at half a million or more, including nearly 72,000 middle and high school students. And with that television tour of the situation across the country, let's go back to Lester Holt here in New York, who's heading up our coverage of what organizers have called this day without immigrants across the U.S. Lester, I presume they are also calling it a success given the crowds across the country so far. The crowds have been large, and as I said, they're still marching here in New York, Brian. These marches and protests have been going on since March, originally as a protest against a crackdown on illegal immigration. They've grown in size, they're touching more cities, and they've become more organized. But the question remains, what will the impact be of all this? Keeping up the pressure, the numbers today as big, if not bigger, than earlier marches as organizers raise the stakes. Many of the protesters heeding a call to flex their economic muscle by staying off the job and out of the stores. From Sacramento. And I took my day off and I said, you know, I got to back up my brothers. To Washington. I'm out here today like everyone else. We're not shopping, we're not buying, and we're all in, out here to, to have a very clear message. The uneven effects of the boycott fell from Main Street to Churchill Downs. From what I'd heard, that there was going to be some walkouts today. So as it turns out, I did, I did have four, four no-shows. In New Orleans, where illegal immigrants have found abundant work since Katrina, protesters were out to remind the community and the country of their value. In New York, protesters and supporters formed a human chain, linking the plight of illegal immigrants with a larger issue of workers' rights, something organizers hope resonates with immigrants and non-immigrants alike. I'm working, I'm a community organizer, and I'm here because we, I know that we need a change. And that's why I'm here supporting our people, our society. But the question over whether illegal immigrants should have rights is one many American workers remain unsure of. It kind of upsets me, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Well, because there's a lot of people that want to be uh, American citizens, but they got to go through the right channels. Even supporters of greater immigrant rights are weighing whether the protest could provoke a backlash. 
Uh, we think that the American people are generous people and they will understand that this is one of the ways that people can express their uh, rights under the Constitution uh, to, uh, to, to express discontent with something that's happening in Congress. Snapshots of today's protests from around the country, meantime, remind us this national debate is also in many ways a local issue. I'm Ron Allen in Denver, where police estimate the crowd at more than 75,000, making this perhaps the largest political rally in the state's history. A march some two miles long ended in front of the state capitol. Many workers said they decided to take the day off. Some schools reported 70% absentee rates. The Aguirre family closed down their restaurant. Today, this means to the community that we can do it, that we have power, that we have a voice. The Hispanic community here also is trying to stop a November ballot initiative that would deny state services to people here illegally. I'm Kevin Tibbles in Chicago. What is different about this city is they call Chicago the city of neighborhoods, many of them ethnic neighborhoods. And today, they have all come together to march as one. I got family here and I have to be legal, you know. I cannot do driver's license. I got nothing. Why did you decide to march today? The American dream. And everybody loved the American dream. There's still like seven to 10,000 undocumented Irish and they all need to get learned are to earn their legalization and their path to citizenship. It's not only Mexican, it's all immigrant. We need to be a part of this beautiful country. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, America. I'm Jennifer London in downtown Los Angeles. A passionate but peaceful crowd of thousands filled the streets outside City Hall. They shouted, Viva America, and we can make it happen. Immigration to this country is vital to the country's social fabric, its economy. At this hour, a second march is underway, with demonstrators parading down Wilshire Boulevard, a route that's a microcosm of the city's diversity. Organizers, including the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, who urged workers and students to stay on the job and in school today, say the second march is meant to give everyone an opportunity to participate. LA's Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa spoke to the crowd at today's second rally. We come to work. We come for a better life. We come to participate in the American dream. While supporters of amnesty and open borders are quick to note we are a nation of immigrants, these demonstrators in Colorado today remind us that not all of us came from somewhere else. And Brian, tonight it's too early to say what the economic impact of all this has been, but many businesses in the New York area that depend on immigrants for employees were closed today. Thanks for that, Lester. Lester Holden, Lower Manhattan tonight. As we've heard, one of the main motives behind today's rallies was to show business owners and American consumers how difficult life would be in this country if immigrant workers weren't around to do the work. We have a look at that very question tonight here with that NBC's Don T. At workplaces across the nation, the financial cost of a day without immigrants hit home. For Malone Food Stores, a small grocery chain in Dallas, closing today meant $300,000 in lost sales. It's a little bit of a financial bite. But Bud uh, Rick Gomez says it's a bite his business is willing to take. 95% of his workforce and most of his customers are Hispanic. It is vital, uh, in our opinion, to support our, the customers and the employees and their extended families. Gomez chose to shut down, but in Florida, vegetable farmer Arturo de Leon had no choice and no workers to pick crops. And without them, we can't do it. We just can't do it. Immigrants stayed away from thousands of job sites nationwide. Here in Dallas, only a handful of workers even showed up at this construction site. But not all immigrants agree with the protests. Hey, number eight. Just across the street, Nizar oh, Ali number eight, number and his employees are on the job. We are open today for the business. Proving the point that there's a legal process for immigrating and working. Yeah, you have to work, otherwise you can get money, you know. Still, this much is certain. Millions of immigrants flex their muscle today. At ports in Southern California, 90% of the truckers needed to move cargo didn't show up. For driver Jose Munoz, mowing his lawn instead of working, those idle big rigs are a warning. It's going to be just one day, and if, if things don't change or nothing, they will probably be more days. Days that immigrant workers claim American businesses can't afford. Don Teague, NBC News, Dallas.
And with us tonight for more on this, our counterpart at NBC's sister network, Telemundo. From Los Angeles tonight, Pedro Sefsek, who is the evening news anchor at Telemundo. And Pedro, I have to ask, so many groups have signed on to this series of demonstrations across the country today. One columnist said they have hijacked the real cause of these demonstrations. Do you agree with any of that? Do you see any of that? No, not really. Not really. Here we have a spontaneous movement. Here we have something that is really historic. Nothing like that has happened in decades in this country. And some people are trying to take advantage of the whole movement. But the movement is a lot bigger than them. So at this point, I will say they are clean of that bad influences. Pedro, in our last uh, NBC News Wall Street Journal poll response, were asked if this May 1st boycott would help the cause or hurt the cause. And 57% to 17%, the outcome was that it would hurt the cause. Why do you think that opinion is out there and prevalent? Well, First of all, I think they are right in terms of the regular consumer that will feel the pain today of not having the opportunity to buy something, for example, or not having the service that they are used to. But on the other hand, I would love for NBC and the Wall Street Journal to do this poll inside the House and inside the Senate. And today there are hundreds of thousands of signs that say, basically, today we march, tomorrow we vote. And I think among politicians, this is helping the cause of the immigrants. Pedro Sevsek, uh, the evening news anchor at our sister network, Spanish language network Telemundo. Pedro, thank you for appearing with us. It's always good to see you. A uh, pleasure, sir. We'll take a break here. Elizabeth Vargas. Tonight, the nation's illegal immigrants try to show America how essential they are by filling the streets instead of going to work. We'll measure the impact. Gas. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Bob Woodruff and Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. We begin with an economic show of force by America's illegal immigrants. Today, hundreds of thousands demonstrated around the country instead of going to work. In some areas, they also boycotted businesses. They wanted to show America how much the country and the economy depend on undocumented workers. Altogether, close to a million people took to the streets in more than 30 cities, and that number could still rise. It was the newest wave of protests against legislation that would increase the penalties for being in the U.S. illegally. Tonight, we have reports from around the country. We begin with ABC's Miguel Marquez in Los Angeles. They came by the hundreds of thousands from farming fields, from schools, from offices, and from construction sites. The crowds are just enormous. This one in downtown L.A., most of these people took off from work today all to prove the point they say that Latinos and immigrants are united and that they mean something to this economy. Hazel Gonzalez is a small business owner. How much are you going to lose today by being down here? About a thousand, thousand. And you'll eat that? Huh? You'll eat that? You know, you know what? I don't need it. I'm not dying for hunger or anything. I mean, I'm here to back up everybody that's from Mexico that is illegal here. One thing that's different between this march and earlier protests is that this one is much more organized. These people are actually marching in specific groups. They're also raising money along the way. It's become a very emotional issue here in Los Angeles with the stakes high for both sides. I'm Dan Harris in New York City. There's some talk that turnout would be low today because there have been all these rumors about immigration officials cracking down on illegals here in the country. But that certainly was not the case at this protest in Queens. In fact, there were so many people that they couldn't keep the protest on the sidewalk. Decent Decent people spilled out into the streets. Everybody on the sidewalk! If you want something to happen, you have to make yourself be heard and seen. If you look back in history, I don't think a lot of people who wanted the things done ever followed the rules. If you look at the civil rights movement, nobody followed rules. America! God bless America! 
the protest was called for 12.16 p.m., a symbolic time because December 16th was the date when the House passed the bill that would make illegal immigrants felons. This is Dean Reynolds in Chicago. Where the police here say at least 400,000 people were on the march today. And while the crowd was predominantly Latino... We're here. We're not going back. There were pockets of Poles, Irishmen, Germans, and a few Senegalese as well. Organizers said most of the marchers here were legal immigrants, citizens by now, or those trying to be. Are you trying to get citizenship? That's what we're here. A fact they hope will resonate with lawmakers. One of the main slogans of this group today in Chicago is Hoy marchamos, mañana votamos. Today we march, tomorrow we vote. And today they had the look of a powerful political movement. Elizabeth? Dean Reynolds summing up our reports there. The point today was to make a point and to make an impact. Reporting on the economic impact for us tonight is ABC's Bill Weir. The 7th Street Produce Market churns with activity most Monday mornings. Not today. An army of hopeful laborers typically stands outside this Home Depot. You want to help? Today there was one. From malls in Atlanta to restaurants in Chicago, the sign was the same. Closed. Custom rubber products in Houston tried to adjust by staying open on Sunday, but production was down. And today, two of the 67 employees showed up. They will have a very big impact on my business if they decided to say, you know what, we're going to continue this uh, protest for some extended period of time. What you're talking about here is a temporary disturbance and one, of course, that the economy will immediately get over. Goya Foods chose to stop all deliveries, leaving over 300 trucks idle and 5 million products undelivered. Meatpacking giant Cargill gave 15,000 workers the day off and Tyson Foods shut down 12 of its plants across the country. While industry can adjust to a short, pre-planned boycott, this day shows how vital 7.5 million undocumented workers are to the national economy. They comprise 24% of all farm workers, 17% of those who clean, 14% of those who build. It's hard to envision how, how, the, uh, how these industries would keep going if, if uh, you know, 15 to 25 percent of the workers just disappeared. But not all workers felt the need to boycott. All 200 of dressmaker Lonnie Kane's employees are here out of loyalty, he says, and appreciation for above average wages and benefits. Was there anybody who came to you conflicted, who wanted to participate, who wanted to support the community, even if they are happy in this job? I think if you look around and you see a number of people in white t-shirts, they're expressing themselves. The reason they're here is to do this. Okay. Um, if, if they want to become involved in activism, then that's another job. This is what activism looks like on Wilshire Boulevard at this hour. A scene that is certain to resonate politically, if not economically. And as Elizabeth, as far as the bottom line cost, one economist told me it's, it's like a one-day natural disaster without the reconstruction or cleanup. All right, Bill, we're reporting from the thick of it all. One man who left work to join a demonstration said it would be worth losing several jobs if it made it easier for illegal immigrants to get their working papers. ABC's John Quinones has the story of another man in San Antonio, Texas, who broke decades of tradition to make his own statement. Este es un día para estar feliz, todo mundo. Marco Salinas did something today he's never done before. He took a day off from work to join the March on Immigration. Usually, this is where you'll find Marcos, working in a little restaurant on the banks of the San Antonio River. I want a Marcos style, okay? Ten sirve patron margaritas, okay? This native of Mexico has been a waiter here for almost 30 years and says he's never missed a single day of work. 29 years and you right. never missed a no, day? Sir. No, sir. No. Except, you know, my, my vacation. A lot of people think that immigrants are taking jobs away from Americans. It's not true. The United States have a plenty of jobs. The Mexican national. He don't care what kind of work want to do. He don't care how many hours want to work. He only wanted to care the family. Marcos put his daughter through college, and his son is now the general manager of a brand new hotel. What did he teach you? 
basically, you know, you gotta, there's nothing ever gonna be given to you. You have to go out there and get it. It's an all-American success story. For me, I think this was one of the greatest countries to live. And that's why the man who's never missed a day of work was at the rally in solidarity. We are here. People living for five or seven years. <laughs> How you can send these people back? There's no way. His message to Washington? Touch the heart before make the decision. After the rally, it's back to work. Too many tables waiting for Marco Salinas. John Quinones, ABC News, San Antonio. The immigration debate to be continued, undoubtedly. To news now about a... Yours. Larry, thanks very much. Good evening again, everyone. We are just steps away from the corner of Wilshire and La Brea. There are people all around us, some of the hundreds of thousands of people all across the country. Most are Latino, many of them here illegally, but also there are many simply supporting them. They walked off their jobs or skipped classes. Some marched for immigration reform, some for outright amnesty. Above all, they came out today out of the shadows to make a point. From coast to coast and in dozens of cities in between, immigrants, both legal and illegal, were on the march. It is time that 11 to 12 million people who work so hard each and every day that contribute with their sweat and their equity and their hard work to this great nation are saying, we are ready to embrace the American dream. We are ready to embrace America and we hope that today America is ready to embrace immigrants. It was billed as a national day without immigrants, a chance for America to see what would happen if immigrants didn't work, didn't send their children to school, or spend money in stores. Instead, they took to the streets. I think it's important that we, uh, we do a boycott today to show that we are important. In California, home to the country's largest illegal immigrant population, there were demonstrations up and down the state. Centered by a massive American flag, an estimated half a million demonstrators moved through the streets of Los Angeles to City Hall. In Chicago, more than 300,000 marched to a rally in Grant Park, and schools in some parts of the city reported their attendance was down between 10 and 33 percent. We are at a crossroad. In New York, protesters formed a series of human chains in the city's five boroughs, then marched down Broadway to the federal courthouse. The picture was much the same in cities all across the country, from Washington, D.C., to Homestead, Florida, to Las Vegas, Atlanta, to San Diego, along the Mexican border, even embattled New Orleans saw some protests. Some companies and small businesses shut down for the day. Tyson Chicken closed 12 of its 100 processing plants. Purdue closed eight of its 15 plants, all in anticipation of a shortage of workers. But not all immigrants agree with today's action. The group, You Don't Speak For Me, spoke out against the protests and the reasons behind them. We understand the important contribution immigrants have made to the economy and the industry of this great nation. But the difference is that we and millions of others like us did it legally. We're all here today to tell those illegal protesters, you do not speak for me. The protests proceeded peacefully all across the nation, but the issues behind them remain far from resolution. Well, that's the big picture in very broad strokes. From a distance, the crowds today resemble those last month when millions marched to make the same point. The aerial shots are impressive, no doubt about it, filled with people packed together, but they don't tell the whole story. For that, you had to get up close in the thick of the crowd. Today's demonstration in downtown Los Angeles at times seemed more like a giant block party than an act of political protest. There was plenty of food and music and thousands of flags, Mexican and Salvadoran, but most of all, American. There's several hundred people carrying an enormous American flag, which is probably very visible from, from above. Uh, there was a real sense after the first major demonstration uh, that there were too many Mexican flags shown and not enough American flags. Organizers this time have made a real effort to have, to have as many American flags visible as possible, and they're all over the place. 
The crowds came for different reasons, supporting a patchwork of causes. Most, however, called for some form of amnesty for illegals and immigration reform. 67 percent or somewhere in the 60 percent of the United the States wants that. The president wants that. We all want that. That's all we want, comprehensive immigration reform. As contentious and, and divisive as this issue is, uh, when you're actually in the demonstration, I mean, it, it, it's actually got a real festive atmosphere. People have brought their entire families, young and old, little children and strollers. Uh, it, it's, it's in some ways a celebration, a celebration of, of uh, what some people here will tell you is, is a newfound power. A lot of people in the crowd are chanting, we can do it, we can do it. And I think many of the people here feel that really for the first time their voices are being heard. We can do it, we are doing it. You know, people are coming together. And this is only the beginning, but I mean, this is a dent. You know, getting people together, you know, everybody just coming together and doing something. That's the way this country was founded. We're here to celebrate that. We're here to celebrate why it is that America is America, you know? You know, si se puede! Dorian took the day off from his job as an administrative assistant. And, you know, I might get in trouble. I probably will get in trouble. But you know what? I wouldn't want to be anywhere else today. You know, God bless America. God bless America. That was something we heard a lot today. As immigrants, legal and illegal, and their supporters stepped out of the shadows and into the fray, making sure their voices were heard. And this is actually uh, the second demonstration today. The first one was at City Hall, which I just showed you that piece about. Take a look at some of the pictures right now. As far as the eye can see, uh, there are people here just filling the streets, uh, listening to speeches, milling around. As I said, it is a very festive atmosphere. As for the economic impact, may not be what organizers had hoped for. Again, a number of meatpacking plants and chicken processors in the Midwest and South shut down today. Goya, the largest maker of Latin foods in the country, suspended most deliveries. And McDonald's said locations in parts of the country would close early or only offer drive-through service. But by and large, transportation and shipping and agriculture got through the day with barely a glitch. In other words, today will probably end up being less about dollars and more about votes and voices in a growing national debate. Two true crime. We are here uh, in the crowd of uh, demonstrators who have come out today. What is your name? My name is Beatriz Cortez. And your name? Douglas Carranza. So why did you come out today? Well, I came to support my community. Our community is out here expressing the, their desire to obtain rights, to fight for dignity, to obtain legalization. Uh, our community contributes, and all these people work all day to contribute to this country. And we want to be able to also receive the rights that every citizen has. There, there are some who said that there may be a backlash because of this demonstration today, because of people leaving their jobs. Does that concern you at all? No, I think that, you know, if people are leaving their jobs, it's because they feel that they're not being heard under other circumstances. And unfortunately, leaving your job is a way to also affect the economy. And that is not our desire, but it's our desire to be heard. So I think it's, a, it's really a call to everybody. We don't feel that this is an issue about the Latino community alone, but all the communities that are fighting for dignity and human rights, and that we should be heard without having to walk out from our jobs. We don't want to do that, but we have no other choice. There's a lot of American flags in the crowd today. In the first demonstration, there were a lot of Mexican flags, and that, that caused something uh, of, of some tension. I think organizers wanted a lot of American flags. Why do you think it's important to, to have the American flags out here? I think uh, uh, people feel appreciated. Feel it's a, people are trying to show that appreciation also. And I, I will say that uh, it is important for American people, the majority, to, to understand you know, that this country is made up by immigrants. That is what we are showing here. And also this issue is not about nationalism. It's an issue about dignity and human rights, and we are emphasizing that. We feel part of this country. It was a bit, what do you think it was a success today? Yes, it's a success. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a national uh, demonstration. It's not just in Los Angeles, as you already know. And Thank we're, you. And we're showing that. Take care. Uh, we're going to have a lot more. We're going to talk to Univision's Jorge Ramos when we come back. Stay with us.
tonight on Nightline, a special edition, the immigration wars boiling today as hundreds of thousands of immigrants and their supporters walk off the job and onto the streets for a massive show of force. We have live reports from the city at the epicenter of the protests, from the small town where the protesters made history, and from one protest that got out of hand, the explosion over immigration. Passion stirred, tempers flaring, all over the question of who gets to live and work in America. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Los Angeles, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in Times Square, New York, this is Nightline, May 1st, 2006. Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Terry Moran. Today, this city saw a demonstration of epic proportions, a peaceful army of protesters marching through the city streets. They're just cleaning up after them behind me right now. It was a massive show of strength from Southern California's immigrant community, angered by proposed legislation in Congress that would make every illegal immigrant a felon. More on L.A. in a moment. But this was a national day of protest by immigrants and their supporters. About 400,000 people protested in Chicago, where marchers gathered in a downtown park for one of the biggest events of the day. In Philadelphia today, huge crowds converged on the Liberty Bell. In Milwaukee, a massive march on the shores of Lake Michigan. And these are merely a few examples of the giant flex of immigrant muscle today. Well, one of the biggest events, as we said, was right here in Los Angeles, where an economy that's fueled by immigrants nearly ground to a halt. This is what the shop floor at the American Apparel Garment Factory in downtown Los Angeles usually looks like. 3,000 workers make upwards of 200,000 T-shirts and other items a day here. It's now the largest garment factory in the United States. This morning, the place was deserted. CEO Dove Charney gave his employees, 90% of them Hispanic, the day off in solidarity with the protests. Well, I didn't want my workers to have to decide between their loyalty to the, uh, to the corporation and their loyalty to a political cause. Hundreds of thousands of workers, their families and supporters took over this city streets today in a massive demonstration of sheer numerical power. It was breathtaking. And across L.A. today, the impact of what was billed as the great American boycott was dramatic. The city's wholesale flower market was almost empty. Only a few workers showed up, some under pressure. Uh, we could go about as tall as uh, if we don't show up today, we but it started looking for another job. Thousands of businesses were shut. Roads downtown were blocked off, but traffic in this famously congested city was light today, as many commuters heeded official warnings and stayed home. And 72,000 students, 27% of the city total, were absent from school. Early this afternoon, City Hall was ground zero. <laughs> Around noon, the first of today's two planned marches converged on the Art Deco building made famous in so many Hollywood movies. Well, here on the steps of City Hall, it might look like this place is under siege, but if it is, it's a happy kind of a siege. This is a crowd filled with families, with music, very celebratory atmosphere. It is, despite its massive size, a peaceful crowd, a crowd that is in the classic tradition of great nonviolent American protests. Inside at the city's emergency operations center, deep underground, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa was briefed on what was happening on the streets. We spent some time with him as he struggled to stay on top of the fast-moving events. Very busy day, but you know, as I said from the beginning, our expectation is always that this is going to be a peaceful march. Uh, still don't have a handle on the numbers uh, because obviously uh, the day's not finished yet, but. Uh, where, where's your biggest concern about disruption or... Probably the traffic, frankly. This is in the Midtown area. This is where the demonstration will begin. Uh, it will, the second demonstration will begin. It will start... As he looked over his city through some of the 280 traffic cameras stationed throughout Los Angeles, Villaraigosa made clear city authorities would brook no trouble. 
Are you concerned at all that there might be people who want to make trouble in the middle of this? No, uh, I'm not. That's always a possibility, and I'll tell you something. We will be ready for it. But in the vast sea of people outside, there was no sign of trouble. And for Villaraigosa, that can only come as a relief. He's seen by many Democrats as a future star of the National Party. But the emotional immigration debate is politically hazardous for him. Many immigrant Hispanics want the mayor, a Mexican-American himself, to champion their cause. Many other voters insist he enforce the laws. Do you feel any divided loyalties at all between those members of, of the community who want you to be stronger, who want you to be singing the national anthem in Spanish and flying the Mexican flag or, or whatever, and some of your constituents who get angry when they see that? I learned a long time ago to go with your convictions, with your heart, uh, with what you think is right and wrong. Uh, I was born here. Uh, you know, it, this country's given me so much. Uh, I don't have any divided loyalties. Uh, my loyalty is first and foremost uh, to uh, my faith, uh, my family, uh, and uh, my country, the United States of America. In a sign of just how tricky this issue is for him, Villaraigosa considered leaving Los Angeles today to go to Dallas and lobby the National Football League to put a team here. He changed his mind, but he also says he has no idea of the size of the city's underground population. How many undocumented workers, illegal aliens, whatever you want to call them, are in your city right now? I have no idea. Uh, I know that there are a lot. There are probably more here in this city than any other city in the nation. A million? Um, wouldn't know, wouldn't know. Uh, I've heard estimates uh, from uh, as low as 100,000 uh, to substantially more, maybe up to a million. So you've got a lot of people on the streets of your city today, a lot. You can hear them right outside this window here. What statement does it make about Los Angeles? Well, 46 percent of the city is foreign born. Uh, we speak 130 languages. There are some 30 different nationalities that have their largest population here outside of their country of origin. Uh, there's a great deal of sympathy in this city for hardworking uh, immigrants. And it was sympathy, simple human solidarity, more than any specific political proposal that seemed to drive these protesters today. You hear all kinds of opinions in this crowd. You've got the Declaration of Independence, you've got labor activists, you have people flying the American flag, the Mexican flag. People here don't agree on any one approach except what they would say is a demand for fair treatment for all immigrants. As the afternoon drew to a close, the crowd swelled even more, and the second march of the day reached its destination along Wilshire Boulevard. The mayor spoke to the throngs in English and Spanish. Afroamericanos, Latinos, Blancos, Judíos, Cristianos. And back on the empty factory floor in American apparel, Dove Charney, a Canadian-born entrepreneur whose free-spirited company with its notorious ad campaigns and immigrant work staff is a huge American success story, he saw a watershed in the day's events. Well, we're looking at a borderless world. We're not look, we, we cannot tell people, you can't work here, you can't work there. So I think on the long run, we can celebrate immigration and migration. And I think, it's a, I think mob, freedom of mobility is an important thing. It's not around the corner tomorrow, but it's something we have to work towards. We have to have an, o, an open society. I mean, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. That's one side of the immigration debate, the side that flooded the streets of this city today and nearly brought it to a halt. And now for more of our special edition of Nightline on the immigration wars, we go to my co-anchor Cynthia McFadden with the news about what happened today in New York. It wasn't pretty, Cynthia. Good evening, Terry. You're right. Our special edition of Nightline continues in just a moment on the front lines of a protest that suddenly got ugly here in New York City. And shutting down the town, we go to the Midwest, where factories are feeling the fallout from the walkout. ABC News Nightline. Nightline continues from Times Square with Cynthia McFadden. We continue now with our special edition of Nightline on the immigration wars. The latest estimates are that well over a million people nationwide took to the streets today as part of the so-called Day Without Immigrants protest. The boycott was organized as a political message to show the depth of economic clout the immigration community possesses. So what's the message when the demonstration 
gets out of hand. ABC's Dan Harris reports from a massive rally here in New York. This demonstration in a largely Latino neighborhood began calmly enough with people waving flags and chanting from the safety of the sidewalk. But then we noticed police officers sprinting. The crowd had spilled out into the traffic, bringing everything to a halt. The police were outraged, but their cries went unheeded. Everybody on They were left shaking their heads amidst a suddenly swollen and screaming crowd. It was so loud, a microphone could barely pick up my voice. After about a half hour, the cheerfully disobedient crowd was subdued without arrest. There were some moments here where this protest was not orderly. There may be some people who watch that and say, these people want to be part of our country, they should follow the laws. Well, if you look back in history, I don't think a lot of people who wanted things done ever followed the rules. If you look at the civil rights movement, nobody followed the rules. If you look at everything people did, just in general, if you want something to happen, you have to make yourself be heard and see. Public perception was a big concern today among immigrants and their supporters. Some think a boycott could backfire. We feel that the people that are supporting us will not support us no more because they feel that we're hurting them. They have nothing to do with this. Some people in the immigrant community have said skipping work sends the wrong message. I don't do think so. No, no. That, that would show that uh, we're powerful and that we come here to work. You guys are all high school students? Yes. yes. And you're all skipping school today, obviously. Yes. We need to let them know that we're, we're not going to just give it up without a fight. We're going to do what we came to do to this country. Everyone's here for the same reason. They all want the same American dream. What's one day out of your life? One day is nothing. One day to show the world that you could do something, that you want to you wanna mean something to everybody else in this, in this country. There's been a lot of talk that the proposed crackdown on illegal immigrants has awakened a so-called sleeping giant. There is clearly, however, debate about what the right next steps are for this giant. We Americans, we're not leaving. This is Dan Harris for Nightline in New York. The loud protests here in New York. When we come back, it's not just the big cities, the fallout from the walkout in middle America. In addition to the massive protest marches today in Los Angeles and New York, a tally of a few other cities revealed 15,000 protesters in Houston, 30,000 across Florida, 75,000 in Denver, and 400,000 in Chicago. But immigration issues aren't just big city issues. The immigrant economy is everywhere. And so is the immigration debate. Nightline's Chris Bury reports tonight from Davenport, Iowa. Chris? This bridge over the Mississippi connects the Quad Cities, four smaller cities in Illinois and Iowa. Just a few hours ago, it was the scene of a protest march that shows clearly why the immigration question is just as important here as it is in much bigger cities. This afternoon on the Illinois side of the river, immigrants, nearly all Hispanic and a few Anglo supporters, gathered for the largest demonstration anyone can remember in this placid community where protests of any kind are extraordinarily rare. That said, the march across the Mississippi appeared patriotic, peaceful, and to the point. Si se puede. Si se puede. Its chief organizer, 26-year-old government worker Greg Aguilar, called it an eye-opener. So we can work with the Senate, with the Congress, say, hey, let's help each other out. Let's work with these immigrants. Let's help legalize them so we don't have to stop the assembly lines, so we don't have to stop the meatpacking plants, so we can work together as citizens and not criminals. 18-year-old Lady Ramirez took the day off from school and work. Like many of the marchers, she is an undocumented immigrant brought here from Mexico as a baby and now living in a legal limbo. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I will know that I'm just going to go up. I am not going to go back home. I will stay here because my future is here. I know nothing else but America. I was brought here when I was young, and I know, I know no other way. I think I'm more fluent in English than I am in Spanish. I mean, I, I, I'm an American. I'm Mexican-American. That's what I am. 
As in so many parts of the country, this region too has seen an enormous increase in the number of recent immigrants. In this county alone, census figures show that between 1990 and 2000, the Hispanic population grew by nearly 60%. The first Latinos arrived to work on the railroads after the Mexican Civil War. Since then, this factory and farm region has taken on a more Latin beat. Hispanics now make up more than 10% of the workforce, the largest minority here. Like their predecessors, the newest immigrants came for better jobs. Like Greg Aguilar, the organizer of today's march, they belong to extended families that reach across generations and beyond the border. My grandfather had been coming over since his mother was coming over in 1916, 1920s. There was a lot of work here for a long time, and people just kept coming for those jobs. Home to the headquarters of John Deere, the giant farm equipment company, the Quad Cities has seen its manufacturing base decline. But the meatpacking industry here depends heavily on immigrant labor, and today this Tyson plant, along with more than a dozen other meatpacking operations in the region, was shut down. The one-day economic impact may be minimal, but the message does matter, according to a Tyson spokesman. We think it's important that we have a comprehensive immigration reform. We are in support of uh, enhanced border uh, control. We uh, are in support of some type of guest worker program. We're in support of a earned, an earned status. Uh, and uh, we think that we need more tools. We, in, in the private uh, employer ranks, we need more tools to ensure that we are hiring authorized workers. Today, some smaller local businesses, like this family-owned landscaping company, lost up to a third of its workers. What kind of increase have you noticed among Hispanic workers here in this area. Vice President Kurt Meyer told us he was not happy about losing a day's worth of labor, but also believed the demonstration served as a wake-up call. I, I'm both ways on it, but I, I feel something needs to come up to actually let all of us know how important these employees are to our country's operation. Some people are not going to show up. They're like, what if I'm on camera and they see me? Then how they, how they got that thing over in Iowa, you know, that yeah, they now I Iowa. you if they arrest you and they find out you don't have papers? Okay. The organizers here, nearly all young and inexperienced at such things, worried about rumors before. that immigration authorities might move in and crack down. You're not aware. INS is not going to be there. And even if INS is there, they're not going to be there to arrest people. Still, they seem determined to step from the shadows and embrace their day in the sun. Today, few bystanders objected. The passing cars mainly honked their approval. Over two hours, perhaps 2,000 or so marchers made their way over the Mississippi, past the minor league stadium where the national pastime was in full swing, and celebrated their cause on the Iowa side of the bridge. Their leaders were convinced they had not only crossed the river, but also turned a page in history. This is only the beginning. We're going to see how big of an impact it has. And if it does have a big impact, and the Congress and the Senate doesn't start focusing on these issues, we're going to do it again and again and again until something is resolved. The demonstrations today did not cripple the local economy or shut down the school system. But even here, far from the big cities, the protesters did make a point that the immigrants in this debate are determined not to be taken for granted. Cynthia? Thanks, Chris. The immigration wars in America. When we come back, Terry Moran with a final thought from the Los Angeles on the immigration protests and a look ahead to his exclusive report inside the elite team that can shoot to kill in Iraq from thousands of miles away. A final thought now from here. Whatever you think of the immigration debate, one thing that's striking about these giant protests is how middle class and family oriented they seem. Think about it. They put hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of American cities and with the significant exception of New York, there was very little trouble. This in a country where when a city wins a sporting championship, there are often riots where people get killed. It's a testament really to something that's obvious when you walk among these protesters, how decent and polite and and well neighborly they are. They are gathering in great numbers to send a message to the government, to you, to me, and do it in a nonviolent, civil fashion.
it all seems very American, for what it's worth. Well, tomorrow on Nightline, Hellfire... Elizabeth Vargas, tonight the nation's illegal immigrants try to show America.